Hey guys, so I wanted to do another video on Elder Scrolls Online. We recently had a couple back-to-back -back beta sessions. One was open to the kind of general public, whoever had a beta invite, and the other they held for more the press, um, gaming sites, YouTube channels that cover gaming and things of that nature. And they actually have changed the NDA for uh, me and a lot of other people a little bit. And now that we are allowed to cover some of the video footage and uh, show you guys, but there are limitations on it. i uh, be given permission to show you up to 15 minutes of footage. Um, but there are some caveats to that. There are certain things I can't show you. What I do show you has to be below a certain level. And there are a few other things that I, I don't really want to get into. But I, I just wanted to preface what the video you're going to see with that because you're probably going to see a lot of jump cuts in there because there are some things I need to remove that they really don't uh, want to showing yet. And that's fine. So I just want to make a quick apology for the jump cuts. There probably are going to be several in this video and uh, not too much I can do about that at least I can show you a little footage this time so this time getting into the game I still been having a little trouble with the server stability issues um, it was up and down while I was playing they still seem to be having some problems in that area uh, I've also noticed there was some lag spikes that caused NPCs to act bizarrely sometimes. Sometimes you would kill an enemy NPC and they would stand there and then and then drop dead on you a few seconds later. So there was some kind of weirdness when it comes to that. But overall the, the servers were for the most part stable when they were up. But I still think they have some wrinkles that they need to kind of iron out in that area when it comes to that. So this time around I actually went with a Khajiit character because I wanted to do something a little bit different from the humans that I played um, in recent previous betas. And I have to say that the character creation screen, you know, it's still one of my favorite aspects of the game. They really went all out kind of creating this character creation um, uh, menu for people to really get a lot of fine detail when they create their characters. And it's one of those things that you know, for some reason, a lot of developers haven't really gotten the fact that people really like to customize their their avatars, their tune. Um, for a lot of people, you know, that's your representation of, you know, whoever you're role playing in that game, and people like to um, get down to the very minute details and re really kind of customize them and make them unique. And that's one of the things you really can do with this. Um, they have a huge amount of variation in the kind of uh, creatures that you can create, the looks that you can create. And it's one of the better uh, character creation uh, systems that I've seen in recent MMOs. Um, some other ones have done some decent things. You know, Rift is decent, Guild Wars is okay. Um, but I have to say Elder Scrolls Online is one of my favorites so far. And as I said, this time I rolled a Khajiit because I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I rolled a Khajiit and actually uh, went through the uh, fur types and the colors and got almost a, like a panther looking um, Khajiit. It was pretty cool. So I jumped in the game and we had to go through Cold Harbor again. And, you know, that's the same regardless of, um, you know, what uh, faction or, or class you're playing. You, you all will be going through Cold Harbor and escaping from there. And, you know, like we talked about in the previous video, that's kind of that classic Elder Scroll theme where you're kind of this unnamed prisoner. Um, you're not sure how you got there or, or what you're doing, but it allows you to create a little bit of backstory in your own head for your character, kind of headcanon. So I was going through there, and there was something that I, I kind of thought about last time, but I really didn't touch upon it in that last video. And that was there's a lot of areas with chests and jars and containers and whatnot. And in some of my previous beta sessions, I played more late at night, and I actually was able to find a few items in, in the chests here and there because there wasn't as many people going through. In these last few sessions I played, I've noticed because I've been playing at a lot higher traffic time, that virtually every time I, I couldn't find a single chest or a jar that had anything in it, every single one was empty. And this really kind of struck me as a problem because Elder Scrolls Online is using this kind of static kind of loot system for chests and certain quest items to where the item is just there in the world. Um, it exists for anybody who comes across it and finds it. And once a player empties that chest, it just stays empty until its respawn timer kicks in and it, and it respawns with either the same contents or the new, new contents. And I really was thinking this is a this is kind of an issue that I would like to see him change because while it may 
be better in the future to where people are starting to spread out in the higher level areas and there isn't as much traffic going through them um, especially in the lower areas and the starting locations and whatnot um, you're just finding empty chest after empty chest after empty you know vessel and you're not getting any sense of um, this reward from exploration and finding these things because they're virtually always empty and I would really like to see them change that. You know, some MMOs use this system where it's more of a kind of a personalized um, loot system. You know, Guild Wars does it with their resources to where, you, you know, when you see a resource, that's your resource and nobody can run up and, and gank it from you while you're fighting to get to it and whatnot. And it's there, it's there for them too, of course, but it's just personalized to that person. And, and it's one of the, the things that I really like. Um, about Guild Wars and they've also done this with some of the quest items in the game when it comes to ESO and again the issue is that with is, is you know you're waiting for these items to respawn because another player got there before you um, and, unless you're just lucky and, and happen to come across them first but you know in high traffic areas starting locations to have those kinds of things it's going to create a problem and you know this is something I've experienced in a lot of MMOs is that there's this player animosity against other players because you know like you, know, you stole my you know my uh, my um, creature that I was trying to kill I needed it for a quest you know I was trying to get to it and you hit it with like a, a ranged uh, spell before I could run up to it or you stole my resource node or you know and I have just found that that's this kind of unneeded animosity that you're you're almost pitting the players against each other and you don't need that especially when it's people from your own faction you just don't need to create that kind of negativity and feeling towards people trying to fight over quest items and whatnot so I really hope that's something they take a hard look at in the future and change I'm just I'm just not real thrilled with that to be honest now one of the things I was noticing when I was playing with the Khajiit is that I went with a bow this time because I want to try something a little bit different before I had been previously almost exclusively using melee characters and I don't know if this is an issue that comes down to the first person animations for the Khajiit um, because like I said I hadn't used a bow on a human but I noticed the bow animations at least on the Khajiit were really bad and it's not that they weren't functional, it's just that the bow didn't feel like it had any power behind it. Um, when I was like, you know, knocking an arrow, it just, it felt clunky and, and sloppy. And when I released it and pulled the arrow back, it just felt very clunky. And it didn't feel like there was any power behind the arrow when I released it. And it just wasn't all that satisfying to me. Um, you know, I've played a lot of other games, or even if you look at something like Skyrim, there's a certain feel you get when you, you, know, you draw a bow and you put an arrow in there and you draw it back and you let it go, and it just feels like there's force behind it. And I wasn't getting that feeling from using the bow. Um, it was bad enough to where I'd actually not consider using a bow if that's not something that gets fixed or improved. It just felt very sloppy and very janky, and I really didn't care for it. Um, like I said, I don't know if this is something that's very specific to maybe the Khajiit first-person animations, um, because I didn't really have that problem with the humans using melee weapons. They felt actually, you know, fine to me. Um, I enjoyed them in first-person. Um, the weapons felt like they had some impact behind them, and it just, uh, I, I, like I said, I need to uh, get in there and try a bow on a human and see if that's a, a kind of a, a reoccurring thing or if maybe it's just the Khajiit needs some work on their animations when it comes to using bows. Now the the quest dialogue quality um, in the new area that I tried because I, like I said this was a Khajiit this time instead of uh, a Breton that I did last time. Um, overall it's really good. Um, one of the problems that I'm having a little bit is that Bethesda seems to suffer from this issue where they tend to spend most of their voice acting uh, money on big name actors instead of um, just widening the pool uh, of available talent you know I have to believe there's a lot of voice actors out there especially ones that are you know just trying to get started and whatnot you could hire so many more by spreading out that um, that money and bringing in a lot of those people I'd rather have that than you spend, you know, 70% of the budget on these big name actors like Kate Beckinsale and whatnot. Um, sure, it's it's always nice when you hear one of these celebrity voice actors like the guy from uh, Deadwood and whatnot. Um, 
but a lot of people I feel that they probably don't even notice who's doing the voices unless they're specifically into like a show or a movie that that person has done um, like a lot of people will recognize John Cleese because he has such a recognizable voice and he's been you know working for so long but I think a lot of people they're not even going to appreciate necessarily the hiring of all this really expensive talent and I would much rather prefer that you know all the guards in the city don't sound alike um, that's one of the problems I have with Skyrim is so many of the NPCs are voiced by actors who do so many uh, you know numerous other NPCs in the games it's eventually everybody just starts sounding very vanilla and and alike and I would really I really don't know who in Bethesda makes that call but they seem to have an obsession with hiring some big name actors and then um, blowing all the budget on that and then reusing the same you know small handful of actors over and over again for less important NPCs. Now, uh, I one thing I, I will say is I wanted to talk about is I was starting to do a little bit of the questing in the area, and you know a lot of people I've heard saying that the, the questing in the game is very similar to other games, and I'm not sure I agree with that. The questing in, in Elder Scrolls Online is a slightly more evolved form of questing, I would say, in that it adds a lot of depth and and feeling when you're doing these quests, but you're actually speaking to these NPCs. I did a quest where there was a uh, moon sugar farm and they had a rat problem, and I spoke to one of the NPCs, and apparently they, they had these like tiger-like animals, I forget what they called them, but um, they were out, um, supposed to be killing these rats. Well, I, I went and spoke to the guy who was the the tamer for these things and he was explaining to me how um, they basically can't do it anymore right now because they've eaten so many of the rats and the rats were eating the moon sugar that these tigers are basically high off their ass and and are too stoned to even move so you know it's it was this feeling like I'm, I'm having interaction it wasn't just I talked to one NPC and I go and kill the rats no I, I talked to one NPC and then he explained the situation then I go talk to another NPC and he kind of explained what the problem is and you know we come up with a solution together and then I go carry out the solution which was kind of like a two-step process to getting rid of these rats and then after I finished I went back to the first um, NPC it was actually pretty cool because they was worried about these Thalmor inspectors that were coming to inspect the moon sugar farm and if there was a rat problem they could have been in a lot of trouble and when I finished the quest and I went back to talk to her, the Thalmor inspectors had actually shown up and they was having a conversation about this. So it just added a lot of depth to the game and it added a lot of um, just kind of storytelling elements that you kind of miss in a lot of other MMOs. Um, a lot of things that I've really touched upon in the first video, um, the UI still has a very minimalist feel to me. Uh, I'm still not real happy where it's at. Um, I did have a, a lot of experience with um, doing some quest change where I quest chains where I had some instances of um, dealing with bugs. Um, there was one quest chain in particular where you was helping a um, uh, a student help rescue her master who was stuck in this ruin and being held captive. And at the end of the quest chain, you were supposed to deactivate these traps, and and the traps were just bugs. You couldn't finish it. So you follow through with this, you know, seven or eight step quest line. And you get to the end, and it's just bugged, and it's it's incomplete right now. You know, this is something that I'm hoping that they're going to be able to fix by April. But, you know, with, with the launch coming up, you know, pretty soon here, we only you know a couple months away. The game still at times feels like it it needs so much work, and mainly, it's small issues, but it feels like there's a lot of them still exist there, and they need to be worked on really really quickly if they're going to be launching this in April. I still have fears that this game could be going free to play within about six months of release. Um, I'm not a big free to play fan. I, I haven't been for a long time. I'm not opposed to actually paying for my games. I think uh, free to play largely leads to um, a lot of issues with microtransaction and then kind of exploiting the players. Um, you know, look at what Sotor did with their free to play when they first started out. It was absolutely atrocious. So I'm not a big free to play fan. I, I never have been and I probably never will be. Um, so I was ready to pay for this game, but I have to admit, with the amount of issues that they still need to work out, I'm going to be a little more leery about pre-purchasing this game. Um, I'm hoping that they can get a lot of this stuff cleared up by the time it launches, but I have a feeling some of these issues are going to be in the game when it launches, 
and that's going to create these issues with uh, you know a subscription base that it may drive away a lot of customers who feel that it's very unpolished. I've played a lot of MMOs when they released recently. I played Rift when it first came out. I played Guild Wars when it came out. Those were very polished and very completed games, and I felt very happy with my purchase. I don't feel right now that Elder Scrolls Online is on par with the, the, the polish that those games had when they launched. I feel that this game really needs upwards of another four or five months at minimum of work to really fine tune these, debug these quests that you know a lot of people are having problems with. It wasn't just me, a lot of people. Um, it was just a bugged out quest. They was talking in chat about how nobody could complete it. And there are some other, you know, like I said, I mainly consider minor issues. There are still some kind of graphical glitchinesses. There are some uh, server stability issues. Um, the first person mode, why I feel is very good, especially on humans using melee weapons. Um, after playing the Khajiit with the bow, I can tell you um, there's some serious work that still needs to be done there. Um, some of the first person animations on the Khajiit just look very janky and out of place. Should these things be fixed before they launch the game? I think they should be. Um, no, I'm not saying they will be, but I think they should be. Um, now, whether they can complete that in some kind of a crunch period before uh, the game goes gold, I highly suspect that because we're talking about if they're launching this in early April, you know, they're probably going gold sometime um, March, mid-March. So that leaves them about a month and a half of crunch to really clean this game up and fix some of the issues. Now, I will say... I had less instances of missing voice dialogue this time, at least in the new area that I tried. I will have to go back and play through Breton again to see if some of the missing dialogue in that area is still missing or not. Um, my hope is is that they just managed to patch a lot of that in and it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, again, I haven't tried a lot of the higher level content yet. Um, and even if I, you know, when I do, I don't know when I'm going to be able to talk about that because there are still restrictions on that NDA. Um, so overall, it, it was a good experience. Again, I, I'm still enjoying the game when I play it. I probably will pre-order it and probably get it. I think I'll be playing it when it launches. But my expectations for the quality of it have been lowered a little bit. And I think there are some issues that they really need to uh, kind of get on and fix because I think a lot of players when they go in for the first time they're not going to feel that this game is of the quality that it should be especially considered the the massive budget that they spent on it it's not where it should be yet still and I'm very surprised still that we're, we're launching in April but um, you know we'll just have to see how that turns out I'm hoping in, in the next uh, month or two that they really kind of fine-tune some of this stuff and fix the issues and uh, I'll let you know as uh, the NDA keeps opening up and we get closer to launch I can talk more about the game and uh, hopefully uh, things get better and I'll, I'll let you know if they do and um, I'll talk to you soon and thank you for listening.